High Adventure. Tonight's story is entitled No War for Lovers. Dicey, mate. Very, very dicey. You wouldn't catch me sticking in the cat like that. Not even if she's the best looking bird on the whole island of Cyprus. I've got to, Ted. It's six weeks since I last saw Cara. All the same, mate. She's like an enemy, you know. I'll be down to prove that sort of goings on. <laughs> There's no law about it. Well, don't have to be, Paul. It just ain't approved of, that's all. Say an old man or a brother's a terrorist, say, what then? That's typical of you, Ted. To you, all the Greek and Turkish Cypriots are terrorists. You can't generalize on people like that. Well, since we have to keep a peace around here, we ain't exactly popular, you know. Or oh, ain't you noticed? trouble around here is that no one understands or even tries to understand the other side's point of view. Well, why should they? All they do is shoot at each other. You know, nobody wants to lose points by listening. Anyway, I'll be in town in a tick, so you better tell me where to go. Uh, you don't only stick your own neck out for this bird, but mine as well. <laughs> You're a pal, Ted. I'll uh, just change out of uniform and you can drop me at the far end of the block. When you pass the post office, it's the third street on the right. Cara lives over a shop. By herself? Oh, that's handy. Her mother and father were killed last year. In the middle street Ah, sorry about that. Now, one more dead. Jimmy, we've gone into an ambush. Keep going, Ted. Uh, There's no time to turn back. Put your foot down. Jump, Paul. I'm never going to make the bend. Try. Jump, John, you jump. <laughs> What are you doing here? We were ambushed by a hill of terrorists half a mile away. My mate bought it. I've been dodging about for the last hour. I was on my way to see you, love. Oh, you shouldn't have, Paul. It's dangerous. Oh, you know how I want you here with me. But it is all so impossible. All around here is the Mayorka stronghold. We must wait, Paul. Be patient. These troubles must end one day soon. They've been saying that for the last three years. Instead, it gets worse. I've been worried about you. You got my letter? Letter? A week ago. It wasn't important. Just to let you know I'm all right and still... still in love with you, Paul. Oh, oh Paul. It would have cheered me up. And you know how I feel about you, love. He hears the people. Something is going on outside. Let me open the window. It's a car down the road. What are they doing? What do the people here do all the time? Shout and wave their hands around. Were you seen coming here? No, I don't think so. I was chased and fired, but that was over in the main street. Oh, Paul, you shouldn't have taken the risk of coming out there to see me. I was passing this way, so the ambush would have happened just the same. You can't leave here until it's dark. The crowd is coming down the street. It is possible they are searching the houses for you. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I shouldn't have come here. Is there a way onto the roof? That is one of the first places they will look. Look, I can't stay. If they find us here together, we'll both be strung up from the nearest lamppost. Take off your clothes and get into the bed. If right. they come inside, you are sick and asleep. Yes, but... Please hurry. There is no time for argument. Oh, the darn rotten situation. I'm sorry, Kyle. We love each other. It is my duty to protect you, even from my own people. Quickly now, into the bed. I will close the curtains. Lie still, no matter what happens. Nobody can see you there, unless they make a point of looking. My name's Harry Walters. And during those desperate and chaotic days on Cyprus, Private Paul Dennison was a fellow transport driver, as well as a fairly close friend. He'd known Kara for over a year, and most of his mates knew he was blindly in love with her. Naturally, we advised him against it, as it could only bring in trouble, and perhaps even death. Yet Paul ignored our warnings and continued the affair. 
History is dotted with characters who risked their lives and honor for the sake of a woman's love. And Paul Dennison was one of them. That day, trapped in a small town filled with mortal enemies who were relentlessly hunting him down, Paul put his complete trust in Kara. It was a test of her love. Minutes after taking to the small bed in a curtained alcove, there came a loud knocking on the door. He heard men's voices speaking to Kara in Greek, and then, to his relief, the door closed, and he was again alone with her. Is it all right, Kara? You'd better stay where you are for a while longer, Paul. Some of them are standing under the window. I'm lucky they didn't search. They wouldn't. Most of them know I'm Marcus's sister. Oh, yes, Marcus. Is he still in Greece? I shouldn't really tell you, Paul. He's got a price on his head, as you know. But, yes, he is back. And he must never know that we still see each other. He is filled with hate for the British and it's Turks. All right, I'd rather keep out of his path anyway. The last time we met, it was nearly a shootout. I can hear someone coming up the stairs. Lie back and straighten the curtain. It could be Marcus. <gasps> no, it's you, Marcus. Uh, did you hear all the excitement? <laughs> yes, some of the men came up here. Uh, we shot up an army lorry on the highway. <laughs> the co-driver managed to get away. But if he's in town, he'll catch him. There are a few risk sheltering an English soldier. I was just about to go out. I'm not saying... Grievous has been around with the plan for tomorrow night. I want to give you a quick briefing on the assault. No, Marcos, sir. I mean, well, not now. What's the matter with you? I told you I was going out. To where? The market. Then there's no urgency. I can't see you before the attack, and Grievous says you must lead the assault group. I, I can't. You must. You're one of the best we have, Cara. How can you miss a thing like this? Now, listen carefully. The English have set up a fuel and stores dump at the foot of Kirigan Hill. It's guarded by only 20 men at the most. They assemble at Taki's farmhouse at 9 tomorrow evening and attack at midnight. Is all that clear? At Taki's? Of course, where else? That's where the last consignment of arms was hidden. Anyway, I must go and help find this damned Englishman. <laughs> See you tomorrow night. And don't forget, your home group is depending on you. I'll be there. Well, Paul, I suppose you heard and understood all that. Are you shocked? You? You, Cara, leading a terrorist assault group? It's unbelievable. How many times have you told me you'd rather die than get involved? How could I tell you I operated with Marcos? I love you, Paul, not as an Englishman, but as a person. It goes above our politics. Cara, don't you realize that soon the army will hunt you down? What then? The vast majority of Cypriots are against your army, Paul. We can only win in the end. Perhaps I will die for my cause before. Perhaps you will die for your cause. If you have one. That is war. Cause? You mean the aims of a bunch of gangsters? Paul, am I a gangster? No. And not you. You've been misled by this Aoka propaganda. It can't work, this union with Greece idea. The Turks won't stand for it. The Turks are a minority. We will have our own way. Sit down, Paul. No, no, I must go. If you go now, they'll surely hang you from a lamppost. You must wait until after dark, and I'll guide you to a friendly area. This whole business makes me feel sick inside. Now you know about me. Has it changed your feelings? No. You're still the same, Cara. Why? Why has fate made us enemies? We are not enemies, you and I. Didn't I say that our love goes beyond politics? Look, if we got a chance to run away from all this, would you come with me? You'd desert the army? For you, I'd blow up the colonel himself. Yes. Yes, I mean desert. And you'll have to desert your Aoka friend. Well, where could we get to? Anywhere, anywhere away from this darned island. Just, just try our luck, that's oh, all. But Paul, Paul, have you got a plan? Look, me and a couple of my mates did a big fiddle a while back. We made a couple of thousand out of it. I've got my share stashed away. Enough to buy a boat with. <laughs> it, it sounds completely mad. But don't you understand? We'd be free, Carl. Paul, Paul, I'll do it. I've also got some money saved up. Organize the boat, Paul. 
And I'll be ready when you give me the word. Tomorrow? No. No, not tomorrow. Because of the assault on the field dump? I must go. Call it my last act of duty. But there is another reason, Paul. What? Don't be offended, please. But it will remove the temptation of reporting details of our plans. I see. You're forcing me to choose between you and the lives of the men guarding the dump. No. All I ask is that you keep silent. And I promise you, we will sail away from here together. It's not easy. I feel like a damn traitor. Still. Yes? You have my promise. All that afternoon and until late in the evening, Paul and Kara stayed undisturbed in the small apartment. What could have been an idyllic interlude was spoilt by the ever-present political crisis and potential danger. Soon after 11, Kara led him out into the dark and silent street. It was a three-mile walk, but she left him within sight of his barracks. He was greeted like a man returned from the dead, and his report was made the following morning to the adjutant. Then he reported to Sergeant Webb. I feeling sorry all day yesterday we were. We all thought you'd been caught alive and were getting the old torture treatment. <laughs> what did you do when you jumped from a lorry, eh, lad? Oh, uh, there were a lot of rocks, Sarge. They uh, chased me, but they must have given up after a while. And then I found some shelter and lay dog out till it got dark. Oh, you were lucky, lad. Darn lucky, let me tell you. Uh, Sergeant, we were scheduled to take a convoy of lorries over to Limassol today, weren't we? I want to go on it, if you haven't already fixed the rotor. Oh, did Major Wishart not tell you, lad? It's all off. Nobody's allowed out of camp until further orders, so the convoy's been cancelled. You have a nice rest today, lad, and a report as usual tomorrow. Unless there's an emergency. Well, what's it all for, Sergeant? Oh, I can't be sure, but I think there's a, an anti-terrorist action in the offing. There's strict security. So strict, in fact, that not even the usual locals are being allowed to work in the camp today. Anyway, Dennison, you can cut along now, and we'll see you back on parade in the morning. Good work. And that, oh, uh, I'm sorry about your mate, Ted. He was a good lad. <laughs> and felt a sickness in the pit of his stomach as he walked over to our hut. Since he'd found out that his beloved Kara was one of the leaders of the very people we were fighting, his mind had found itself unable to focus. And now Sergeant Webb's story about a possible anti-terrorist action that night really scrambled it. What if it were an assault on this Taki's farm he'd heard Marcus mention? Was it possible that the army had learned that the Aoka were meeting there tonight before attacking the fuel dump? If so, would Kara believe it was he who'd given them away? That is, if Kara survived. He tried to comfort himself by the thought that anti-terrorist strikes were happening almost every day. I was sitting cleaning my wedding when he came in. Hello, Harry. Oh, hello. Just a rest. Uh, over at the Naffy. Here, here, sit down and have a smoke. You look all in. Oh, yes, I am a bit. I should think so after what she went through yesterday. Anyway, you've, uh, you've been knocked off the duty roster till tomorrow. Yeah, so the side was saying. Look, uh, do you know what all this big security is about? There's something special for tonight, I hear. We're going to give the Mayoka gangsters blazes. There's no chance of getting a pass out of the camp, sir. <laughs> Be easier to get an invite to the Queen's birthday party. Ah, forget it. That little bit of Greek crackling you're stuck on will have to wait a while longer, matey. Weeks since you've seen her, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is weeks. Yeah, look, um, if you want a bit of advice about her, Paul, play it careful. You never know who the heck she is, and besides, the army frowns on it. Look, I don't need advice, and I know the score. Yeah, well, I, I was only trying to be helpful. So there's no chance of getting out at all, is there? Yeah, you're not deaf, are you? It's impossible to get out of the gate. Yeah, <laughs> why don't you like that snap I gave you? I want to go on the duty roster for tonight, then. Yeah. Well, you were a bit late. It'll have been made up by now. 
Well, I'll get someone to swap. Um, go and chat up Corporal Watson. Maybe he can fix you up. But it beats me why you want to go risking your neck again after yesterday. I got my reasons. Come in, Cara. You're very early. I got more, though, waiting in town. Am I the first? No, there are three others in the next room. You can go through and choose your weapons. I'll keep you company for a while. You're looking a lot better than when I saw you at the apartment. I had a bad headache. And now? I can't wait to get started. Ah, that sounds better. But this is my last operation for a while. Why? After tonight, I'm handing over my command to Melita. I want to go away for a few weeks. I, I need a break from all this. Melita will be a poor substitute. I'm going, Marcos. Melita can cope. I can't understand you. This Englishman you are seeing doesn't come into the picture, does he? No. Now stop asking questions. How many are we mustering? There are 11 in my group. Let me see. George, Sparrow, Demos, Nicky. Um, say about uh, 80 altogether. <laughs> Quite the show, as the English would say. <laughs> they would be saying it when we hit them. Fuel and ammunition dumps are my favorite target. They make such a display when they go off. Hey, come in. Oh, it's you, Dennison. I close the door. Yes, Sergeant. Oh, uh, Corporal Watson tells me you want to go on the roster for tonight's show. That's right, Sergeant. And he told you that it was too late... But after that, you went to Driver Arsden and asked him to swap duties. Is that correct? Yes, it is. He agreed, Sergeant. But I don't agree. You had a rough time yesterday, and I think you should rest. Tomorrow we're sending six lorries to Lanaka. You can go with them. Please, Sergeant, I want to go with the chaps tonight. Yeah. This is not a vengeance thing, is it? No, Sergeant. I just want to keep active. It could be a stiff fight, laddie. We're only using a small force in order to maintain secrecy. Now, what did Driver Harrison say to your request? He said he'd do it if I could make it official. You've been a good man, Dennison. Uh, but from that time you were larking about with that Greek female, oh, I'm glad you got over it. Well, uh, why, I don't suppose he could do much harm. You mean I can go, Sergeant? You can go with your mate, Harry Walters. He'll keep an eye on you. You, uh, you know your way around over by Kindos, don't you? Kindos? Yes, yes, Sergeant. Good. I've got the orders here for briefing. We're going to trap a large group of terrorists at a small holding there, owned by an undesirable character called uh, Georges Tarkey. We had a tip-off from a reliable source. Should be quite a show. Now then, you cut along to Corporal Watson. You'll be driving a troop carrier. We were just ready to roll when Paul joined me. At nine exactly, we left the camp and drove in the opposite direction to our destination. This was to bamboozle any of the enemy who might have been watching. Eight miles farther on, we turned inland and curved towards our real objective. The farmhouse was set at the head of a valley, which was rocky and littered with meager scrub. We're very close now. Yeah, yeah, you're dead right. Yeah. Hey, look, we're being signaled in to the side of the road. The assault troops will walk the rest of the way, I suppose. If they're using their loaves, they'll occupy the room of the valley first. That should take them half an hour at least to get into position. Right, that's our cargo going. <sighs> Good guess, Paul. They're going up the hill. <laughs> Something of a military strategist, are you? No, I just happen to know the valley. I came here with Cara once for a quick nick. Yeah, yeah, Cara, that was her name. Do you ever wonder what she's doing now? I know what she's doing. Hey? She's down there in that rat trap. You're kidding. I'm going to get her out while there's a chance. Oh, like heck you are. Do you realize what you're... Now listen to me, Harry. I'm quickly going to tell you why she's down there and why I'm going after her. Then I'm dodging off. If you want to send the balloon up after me, you can. Now just give me a few minutes to get out of here, please. Yeah, look, you can't go warning that lot we're in. Yeah, look, I won't. I swear it, Harry. I just want to get Cara out. Now listen to me. May heaven forgive me, but I let him go in peace after hearing his story. I even offered my half of the money we'd fiddled so he could buy a better boat. I was the only one who saw him melt into the dark shadows at the side of the road. 
Then, not five minutes later... The valley was suddenly lit by a dozen portable searchlights, and a hail of fire hit the farmhouse from the valley rim, while on two sides, waves of infantry swept towards it. Men darted out of the white stone farmhouse. Some of them spun round as they were cut down. Others kept low and made it to odd bits of cover nearby. From where I sat in the cab of my troop carrier, I had a grandstand view of the carnage. The terrorist fire increased as they began to recover from the first shock, and soldiers started to fall. And somewhere in the middle of all that was Paul Dennison, armed with nothing more than a bayonet. The battle continued for at least 15 minutes before groups of Aoka men began to throw down their arms and surrender. Even the worst fanatic must have seen the hopelessness of their position. As more and more laid down their weapons and raised their hands, the heavy firing ceased and troops filtered among the terrorists picking up the abandoned arms. It was still somewhat chaotic closer to the farmhouse as a number of men were still holding out from the shelter of its walls. A hundred yards from the building lay Paul. He was playing dead when any figure came close. It was only when, a few yards away, he saw Kara rise from behind a boulder that he made a move. She was in the act of throwing down a rifle. He could see her clearly in the brightness of the searchlights. He rose slightly and called, Kara! Kara, it's me, Paul! Quickly, come over here! Paul! Why, you promised! Tell Mr. Walsh! Oh, I see. You betrayed us! Oh, oh Kara! I, I didn't tell them! Oh, Paul! Paul, I didn't mean to! Oh, Paul! They knew, Kara! When I got back, they already knew, I swear it! Oh, Paul, why did you come here? Not to, to save you! Look, it, it's only my arm. Come on. There's still time. Your soldiers are everywhere. Quickly. Not over there. Where? If we run, come on. Stop. All on fire. Keep running. They were found later lying holding each other's hands in death. Of course, when Kara was identified by her brother, who had surrendered... The truth was realized, and I was put into the hot seat and made to confirm it. The boys in transport clubbed together, carried Paul and Kara together in a specially made coffin. It was shaped like a bell. High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Duffenthal.